today. NVIDIA is full of it. Battle Mage is getting a huge performance boost. NVIDIA is in big trouble, and AMD confirms that Ryzen is getting hybrid cores. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, NVIDIA recently said something that's pretty ironic to say the least. More specifically, the company's chief technology officer, Michael Kagan, stated that cryptocurrencies add nothing useful to society. Now, it doesn't really matter if you love or hate crypto here, because the simple fact is that NVIDIA absolutely benefited from the crypto boom. I mean, NVIDIA literally had to pay millions for a settlement because they didn't tell investors how much crypto affected GPU demand. Plus, it claimed that NVIDIA's senior manager wanted to pursue the crypto market. To be fair, NVIDIA did try to slow miners from buying gaming cards with their light hash rate, but let's not forget the disaster that was. Plus, the company made and sold GPUs specifically for miners. I mean, give me a break here. Of course, he's trying to push AI given crypto hasn't been doing good lately, but it's like he's pretending like NVIDIA didn't create and sell GPUs made specifically for crypto mining. At the end of the day, this just looks to me like NVIDIA is pretending in hindsight that they knew the crypto market would crash. The question is, why didn't NVIDIA say this back when crypto was at its height? Next up, you have to stop. Stop it. Stop overpaying for your VPN. Get the premium option for less with today's sponsor. Atlas VPN, the VPN service that I trust to protect my data at a fraction of the price other services charge. I'm talking as little as $1.83 a month, while at the same time giving you some incredible features. Of course, it protects your data by hiding your IP address, but it also lets you bypass geo-restricted content on Netflix so you can watch your favorite shows, and you can do it at 4K, plus it blocks malicious links, ads, and even trackers, and it does that while protecting all of your devices with one subscription. Seriously, this is an amazing deal. If you've been considering a VPN, Atlas VPN is the way to go. Because when you visit my link in the description, you'll get it all for $1.87 a month for three years with three months free. And they give you a full 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's no reason not to try. Just visit the link in the description below. Next up for today, we have a huge story on Intel's upcoming Battle Mage GPUs. I mean specs, performance, and more. The story comes from Red Gaming Tech, who shared a roadmap a little while back on Intel's future ARC GPUs, and it gave us release information up to Q3 of next year. Well, in his new video, he goes over more information that he's apparently seen and heard but isn't able to show any slides or anything. But he goes over some of it here, and it's definitely spicy. For starters, Intel's next-gen Battle Mage apparently gets up to double the cores of their current Gen A770. So we're talking 64 XE cores, which is obviously said to be a big jump in performance versus their Alchemist cards. Not only that, but they're apparently targeting 3 gigahertz plus a whopping 48 megabytes of L2 cache with a similar die size as the 8103 GPU. It also apparently utilizes TSMC's 4 nanometer process, and the launch is allegedly coming for gaming in Q1 or Q2. When it comes to performance targets, he doesn't show it here, but in the video, he claims that Intel is targeting up to a 4070 Ti or 4080 performance, so they're definitely set for a big boost in performance over current gen. And given it releases in time, it should be sooner than Nvidia or AMD's next-gen cards. So those targets are honestly very impressive. One thing he does show on this slide, but he's not sure about, is an apparent big improvement in ray tracing, as well as a potential redesign of all of their XE cores. Basically, Battle Mage is looking like a very impressive jump in performance. With that said, don't forget that the head of Intel's graphics division, Raja Kaduri, recently left the company. Hopefully, Intel is still planning to continue their graphics business after Battle Mage, but we shall see. Next up, we have a huge story from AMD that could be a serious issue for NVIDIA. If you remember back when AMD announced their RDNA 3 GPUs, the company also announced their own version of frame generation called FSR3. This would be AMD's version of DLSS3. Unfortunately, they didn't give us much information at the time, but it was more or less assumed that it would only work on their newest RX 7000 GPUs, especially given they actually have cores for handling matrix operations. Well, it looks like that 
may not be the case. At this year's GDC conference, AMD shared some new information about their upcoming tech. For starters, they show that up to two times frame rate boost over FSR2, they claim a high probability that there would be at least one sample for every interpolated pixel. They also go over the challenges they face with the tech, but in this slide, they mention MIT license to allow optimal flexibility. And on their GPU Open website, they say, quote, FSR3 is expected to be available under the open source MIT license to allow optimal flexibility of integration. Meaning just like FSR2, FSR3 will be open source, so anyone can play with the code. And that almost certainly means that it won't just be available on RDNA 3 GPUs. Not only that, but it could still be available on NVIDIA graphics cards. Of course, it's tough to say for sure, but even if not, given it's open source, someone may be able to make it work. Basically, this would be a huge issue for NVIDIA given DLSS 3 only works on their 40 series of cards. And lastly for today, it's happening. Just a few videos back, I discussed a Milky Way at home entry that showed what seemed to be an AMD CPU with the hybrid core design, meaning what we saw from Intel starting with their 12th gen CPUs. Specifically, this was said to come with two performance cores and four efficient cores. Well, it looks like AMD themselves have confirmed a hybrid core design. That's right. In an AMD processor programming reference guide for the AMD family 19H model 70H CPUs, which are apparently their Phoenix-based Ryzen processors, AMD actually names the two cores, a performance core and efficiency core, which is obviously very similar to Intel's performance and efficient cores. With that said, keep in mind that this is a programming guide, so the final naming of each core type could easily be different. I have no doubt the marketing department will have a field day with these. Regardless, this more or less confirms that AMD is in fact planning to release CPUs with a hybrid core design. Current rumors point to a Phoenix 2 lineup that comes with the tech. Regardless, this proves that AMD is bringing it to the Ryzen CPUs, and that could eventually include their mainstream Ryzen products, not just their mobile Ryzen. But of course, time will tell. AMD likely plans to test it out first, but we've seen how much of a jump Intel was able to get from including a ton more cores, so AMD could see something similar. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD to include hybrid core design? Or are you just excited for FSR 3? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out the amazing Atlas VPN deal in the description below. And as always, have a great day.